Okay, so um, here is a so little induction heater circuit. out of there. And it looks like it has some little feet that come with it. And there's no coil, so I guess you got to make your own coil. It looks like you can take these feet, maybe stick them under here like so. Looks like they pop on. Like that. Um, there's two holes here. Huh? Let's put them on the outer ones, I guess. Okay, so there we have the feet on this guy, and, um, hmm, looks like a simple enough circuit. Maybe we can, uh, make our own little coil and test it out. Should be interesting. Hmm. Okay, so, um, maybe uh, I have some copper enameled wire here, and it's pretty thin, but and um, PVC pipe, and maybe if I just kind of uh, wrap the wire around this thing a few times, let's see if we can do this, uh, maybe we can make a coil and just hook it up to this to test this thing. Okay, so here's our copper wire and our PVC, That's a little bit of length on that. Wrap her around a few times. Let's see if we can uh, yeah, let's see if we can make a makeshift coil to test this guy out with. Probably should use thicker wire, but I don't think I have any around right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, okay. and uh, there we go. Looks horrible, but um, maybe it will help us test this thing. Okay. Okay. So. Looks like this is labeled as the output A and B, so I guess this is where the coil goes. There's a VCC and ground on this side, so I stripped the ends with a razor blade. It's probably not the safest thing to do, but sometimes you got to live a little bit on the dangerous side, right? And um, so here is the inputs, and uh, I'm gonna feed the wires into there. The wires can go under under that little pad like so. I can screw it down. I get the other wire in there and screw that one down. And uh, and maybe we can uh, hook this. Yeah, it looks terrible, huh? I can probably make a better coil later, but that is horrible looking. Okay, and so I think we'll get a battery and try hooking this up and see how it works. Okay, so I just uh, kind of hooked up a couple pieces of solder to uh, the outputs. This is VCC on this side and this is ground. And I got uh, one of my lithium ion motorcycle batteries. And this is the plus side over here and here's the minus. So we'll hook up the red to the plus, I guess, and the green to the minus. You want to make sure not to hook it up backwards. Okay. As soon as I touch this, you can see the coil start to jitter around. That's interesting. Oh, let me see. Let me get my scope ready, and. Uh, we will, yeah, I think they feel warm, that's for sure. I got my scope ready, and we'll see if we can measure the frequency of this device. Okay. 
I was tracing the circuit, and it looks like these two inductors come off the FETs, and then they just feed right into, directly into this. So this inductance plus that inductance probably sets the oscillation frequency of the total circuit. Okay. And these capacitors are the capacitive part of that. Okay, so we got the circuit running. And um, let's bring our scope probe near here. Let's take a look at the scope. Okay, there is our signal. Let me uh, pause it over here. And let's try to measure what that is, okay? Yes. Come on. Okay, let's see if we can get some cursors and measure what that signal is. Okay, so I got the cursors on the signal, and it looks like about 132 kilohertz. Okay, so if my uh, suspicion is correct, if I add more inductance into this circuit, then the frequency should shift down. It's a self-oscillating circuit. So if I change the inductance, I'll bet we'll change the frequency. Okay, okay we have our LRC meter here. Oh, this is BK Precision, and uh, it always starts off being set on inductance, and here is the test leads. And let's just test to see what these inductors are, so we know how much inductance to add. And see, this circuit is simple to trace out, because the inductors are between here and here, and there and there. And so let's just see if we can clip onto the solder. Maybe I can't, I'll just have to hold it in place. Okay. Okay, there. And let's see what our inductance is. Looks like about 53 microhenries. 53 microhenries. Okay. And there. Okay, so that should be the exact inductance of that. And so if we add some more inductance on, on par with that, then um, we should be able to shift the frequency of this guy. Okay. Okay, so I happen to have this ferrite, which I wound some windings on for a different video, and I just took a, another wire and I wound just like three turns through there and put it in series with our coil over here, and we'll turn this guy on and uh, take a look we'll at our scope probe over here. And look at that. Much different frequency. Now let's, let's put it on pause over here. Oh, pause it. Okay. 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 Okay, so let's get down here and try measuring this. Okay, these cursors keep on, it's annoying how they go right, left, and then both. Okay, so now the frequency is 71 kilohertz. So it seems that putting extra inductance in the load here changes the resonant frequency, and it also changes the Q, it looks like, because it looks like a Q is a lot lower now. And so, um, that's interesting. Let, let's just measure how much inductance is in this uh, toroid that we makeshift toroid that we made. Okay. Okay, so here we have three turns, an extra three turns that I added, just a single wire through this toroid. I know it's hard to see because I got lots of other turns on it. And uh, I have it hooked up to our LRC meter, and it looks like about four microhenries. So I guess four microhenries, an additional four microhenries, uh, greatly shifted our frequency from, uh, what was it, 130 down to uh, 71 kilohertz. Okay. Very interesting. So anyway, I think that this is a, this is going to be a very interesting circuit to use for uh, high power oscillators. So I have some interesting projects I have planned out for that, and uh, we'll see. And we'll maybe make this tunable. This is Dr. James, and thanks for watching.